Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom. We're just getting set up here for our soldering course preview. This is also our third week of September, and this week we are releasing our Wilmington tenor saxophone, so we are super excited to be releasing that. If you are on our mailing list, uh, you're going to see some pictures of that, and you can find out more about that on musicmedic.com. If you're not on the mailing list, go to musicmedic.com on the front page, bottom right, and sign up for our mailing list so you can receive notifications of each instrument that we're going to be releasing this month, uh, each week this month. We're also doing a giveaway for this video. All you have to do is take the hashtag uh, Saxtember and put that in the comments for this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you could, but particularly to enter the giveaway, just put Saxtember in the comments and we're going to take your names and we're going to do the drawing for that this coming Friday with our good Benny Hill, good friend Benny Hill. He's going to be playing the Wilmington tenor saxophone along with uh, Stan Getz's super balanced action that we overhauled, Uberhauled, Uberhauled. Uberhauled here in the shop, and uh, we're going to be putting that up for sale at the end of the month. Um, so, Ryan, we've got a giveaway. We've got a new saxophone coming out. Um, we have our sax timbre a thon going sax on. Uh, let's also, I've got a lot of stuff to say. Let's see, what am I talking about today? Sit down. <laughs> Do oh, yeah, no, have a seat, man. Get We're going to be here for a second. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, kind of a comprehensive preview of our soldering course that's happening tomorrow. That's going to start at 9 a.m. Eastern with Ryan, and Ryan's going to go over all of the different elements of the soldering uh, skill that you need for band instrument repair, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to go over... Uh, basic and advanced techniques. So if you are an amateur technician, this is going to be great for you to kind of get a comprehensive view of everything that you're going to need to get started. Uh, if you are an advanced technician, say you've been repairing for many, many years or decades, we're going to do a lot of uh, brazing and fabrication in the second half of the course. So that is going to give you, uh, we, we do a lot of fabrication here of keys and broken keys um, are, and seams are uh, something that require a lot of skill and practice as well as knowledge and uh, technical knowledge. So we're going to have a bunch of information and demos on that as well tomorrow in the course. So just go to musicmedic.com, sign up for it's in the education section. It's a studio. It's in the education section. And uh, you can sign up for the soldering one day course. That's tomorrow, September 16th. All right, Ryan. So we, uh, before we do our soldering demo, uh, let's just, let me ask you a couple of questions about the, the course itself. What, um, who is the course for? Um, and, and, you know, what's kind of a general overview of what they're going to be getting in the course? Oh, throw a lot at me here, bitch. Oh, wait, there's a giveaway. Uh, there's also a giveaway if you, giveaway. If, giveaway. you if you sign up for the course. So tomorrow's the course. And if you sign up today, so if you're watching this video live or if you see it later today, you can get a free uh, free solder and let's give it let's give them the other camera. Uh, you can give a free solder and flux kit from Stay Bright. That's just for signing up for the course today. It's like a little QVC action. Absolutely. Uh, so that I don't know what the value of it is. It's, it's fifty dollar value or something like that. Twenty five dollar value, uh, but it's free if you sign up for the course, and we're actually going to be using this type of solder in the course as well, and it also comes with a really high quality flux, so you're going to get that for signing up for the one-day soldering course. Uh, so Ryan, let's talk a little bit about what's going to be in the course. <coughs> Good. Time to think about this. <laughs> We're talking about so much. Uh, no, it's going to be soldering. I'm going to talk about the difference between soldering and welding, uh, the applications of soldering in the band instrument repair world, specifically saxophones. <clears throat> uh, talk about uh, hard solder and soft solder, and all the different nomenclature: hard solder, silver solder, brazing wire. You know, brazing. Now we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk. Um, you know, the equipment that we use, the, the different types of gases that are available to use while you're soldering. We don't use a soldering iron. Uh, the different types mm -hmm. of torts, torches that, you know, that we have that I'll use. Uh, the different types of tips. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about the prep. Okay. Because a lot of with solder is a lot about the prep stuff. It's not just, you know, anybody can, you know, apply heat to a part and heat it up. Uh, but it's all how you prep it, how you get the parts to fit, whether or not they're clean. And that's the demo I have today is soldering on unclean 
parts. Um, but yes, all kinds of stuff. Safety equipment? Yes, safety equipment. Very important, yes. Safety equipment, glasses, all that. What about, uh, uh, we talked about cleanup, but what about finishing? We'll talk about finishing. We'll talk about, um, obviously, soldering on lacquered instruments. There's always that possibility of burning lacquer. Um, I'll talk about some tips that I use to mitigate that and reduce the amount of lacquer burnt. Um, and then, obviously, if you do burn lacquer, the, the cleanup and, the, you know, that things, the color matching, uh, trying to make everything look nice. What are uh, what sorts of tips or knowledge are they going to get in addition to soldering know-how in the course? Um, a lot of prep stuff. A lot of the, the tools that I'll, I use to prep things up, these are some things, that, some things that I really love using, which are the bristle discs. And you can see all the different colors. They come in a variety of different grits. Uh, I'll show how I use these. Uh, in the course, we have other things, the silicone polishing wheels. These are great. I'll basically give them tips for making nice, clean solder joints. We don't want what I call the solder sculpture. Hmm. It's something like this guy. So, yeah, you see that right there? Well, that's modern art right there. You can see a nice, clean solder joint here on the right. Uh, not so clean one on the left. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that today with my other example. Cool. Here. So okay. And are they going to get any sort of uh, charts or like kind of hard copies of information? How did you know? Are you, have you been looking at my notes? <laughs> there are a few. Ch I put together a few charts, a few charts of different types of solder. Okay. Uh, the melting temperatures, the working temperatures of the different types of solder, whether it be uh, lead-based or lead-free. Uh, I also have a chart, multiple charts. Uh, <clears throat> another chart is types of gases, uh, uh, you know, temperatures of those. Um, also, the melting temperature of different metals. You know, obviously we deal with a lot of brass, so um, <clears throat> we'll talk about the melting temperatures of brass. And we've got a couple of different brazing uh, uh, types of material that we use that aren't used in many other places that right. you're going to be going over too. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll, cool. we'll talk about what we use a lot here in the, in the pro shop when we make our necks, which is this brass alloy <clears throat> brazing one. See here. Uh, but this is something that we use to actually, when we make our seams, there's one that I just finished brazing together using this brass alloy brazing wire. Um, and you can see when you clean it up, how it you don't really see any kind of silver seam because it, it more color matches the brass. And it's it's a little tricky to work with. Okay. It's a little tricky to work with. I'll talk about, you know, my experiences working with this. Um, you know, what I've found as far as prep stuff to, to get this stuff to work the best. And you can see a nice solid joint. Needs a little bit of cleanup. Um, so if what I did was an overlap joint for that. Oh, so that's more of an advanced technique. So if you're a technician out there and you want to learn a couple of advanced techniques, that, that sounds like something that you're going to go over as well. Yep. Raising seam. Yep. Very cool. All right. Well, Ryan, um, I just want to tell everybody once again that if you sign up for the course today, we're going to send you that stay bright solder and flux kit for free and if you are watching this between now and say friday don't forget to put hashtag saxtember in the comments so you can be entered in for the saxtember uh giveaway when we have benny hill here to play the wilmington tenor for you it's a little bit of everything today a little bit, a little bit. why don't we give them a little demonstration uh of some what kind of soldering do you have that sure. you're going to do for uh, us <clears throat> we're going to do probably the most common soldering in the band instrument repair world which is soft soldering Okay, cool. Um, and that is a lower temperature than hard soldering. Uh, I'm going to use this stuff right here, which is the Stay Bright, which is actually a lead-free solder. Um, it's actually what you're going to get as a gift for signing up today. That's right. That's right. So if That's you do good, Rich, I do good. All right. <laughs> you, so you did good. Sign, sign up today. You'll get this, but this is what I'll be using um, to solder these two pieces together. So what I have is just a pad cup. And it's not really clean. It's just kind of a bare brass. You know, it's got smudges and whatever else on it. And I have two posts right here, both kind of bare brass. Uh, I'm going to clean one side, and then I'm going to clean the bottom of one post. I'm going to leave the other side unclean, and we're going to solder them together and see what we get. So, Sweet. I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Have my lovely assistant, Rich, hand me the handpiece of my Fordham. Uh, and what I'm using here, before you turn it on, Rich, thank you. Uh, what I'm using here is the, the bristle disc, which I'll talk about how I really love to use these for prep uh, when I'm prepping up parts and cleaning things. So, yes, engage. Welcome. You're very welcome. 
just using these stacked up between the bottom of the post. And then I also like to clean around the rim. Sorry if I put this to work. So this edge right here. Bottom, and I'm gonna just gonna clean one side, one little area for that post to fit. So you can see right there, I've cleaned just that little area. So I'm gonna sit that post where I cleaned it right there. I'm just gonna lay this on top just to kind of hold it. And the other one, I'm gonna do the same thing, except I haven't cleaned the bottom. <laughs> All right, so um, the torch I'm going to be using for this is right here, and this is, you can see the one hose, it's, it's a um, acetylene, is the gas that I'm using. I have a couple other torches that I use. One is an oxygen and propane mixture, which is this little guy right here. You can see the two hoses that right. come down. That, this I will use when I'm doing a lot of key fabrication, where I have to do a lot of hard soldering. And the two gases allow me to get up to the higher temperature range that you need to do your hard soldering. Um, I also have this guy right here. Oh, this guy's a loud one. Rich knows about this. Yes, it's yeah. loud. It is very loud. This is the turbo torch. Uh, it comes with a couple different kits, and it's pure acetylene, but it has some air mixture in here, um, and it gets extremely loud and extremely hot. I think you can roast marshmallows uh, at 20 paces. Oh. Okay. Very right. cool. So here we are. This is the um, just the acetylene. I have my little. Igniter. And they're going to learn more about the different tips and the tip sizes and yeah. the torch types yeah, in the course, too. Yeah, which, when to use what torch in what situation. Uh, light this guy up. So here we are. When I'm up, oh, one thing I almost forgot. Oh, I almost oh, yeah. I didn't say anything just uh, because oh, I was going to wanted to you test you. <laughs> You should have. How dare I? It's a good thing I'm going through a dry run. So just, uh, I'm applying a little bit of flux. To both parts, and this is as you heat it up, it, it you know helps keep the area clean. Now, is it okay that the, the is it okay that the parts were heated just a little bit? Um, that is a good question. There's a lot of talk of whether or not you heat it up before, or sorry, you apply flux before or after you start heating it up. But you can see I've just applied this cold. I really myself prefer to uh, to heat it up a little bit, and then I apply it that way. It doesn't get messy, doesn't drip, uh, but for Demonstration purposes, just for decided to apply cold. Gotcha. So yeah, there's there's either one, either one. But as long as you apply the flux, which I almost did not do. Hmm. So light that torch back up. Get my solder ready. Now when I'm heating the parts up, I'm thinking about heating the areas that have the most amount of mass first. So this post is going to heat up a little bit later than that flat sheet brass and that flange. Make sure I get plenty of even heat all the way around. And I'm not applying solder to the flame. I'm applying solder, you can see right there, to the actual heated brass part. So I'm going to heat this side up a little bit. I'm going to apply some solder here. A little bit more. All right, let's let that cool for a bit and kind of zoom in for a close-up. Remember, the clean part is on the right, the dirty part is on the left. And you can see exactly what we have here, a nice clean solder joint. You don't see a lot of spillage, but you can see right there, see how it's clumped up? Okay, That's mm. a big indicator that two things that you could have done, which is not apply enough heat. You can see we definitely did because this one soldered. Yeah. Um, or not having your parts clean. Okay, And that's exactly what we have there is because I didn't clean the the base that it's sitting on and I didn't clean the bottom of that post, um, the solder didn't want to flow to that area. Even though I did apply plenty of flux, um, the solder will not stick to dirty parts. Now, even though, the, again, the parts fit nice and tight as well, uh, they both fit the same, just this one was clean, this one was not. Clean your parts. Clean your parts, Clean your and parts. then it was did, did you was the distribution of heat the same? Because if I was watching this as an amateur, I would be trying to picture, you know, this like a low E flat key on a, a sax body, 
Um, was it the same amount of heat for the dirty and the clean? Yep, same same amount of heat. Same okay. Amount of, again, <clears throat> concentrating that heat on the areas that are going to heat up a little bit later. So if I just put the heat just right to here, um, I, I like to think about heating a bigger area rather than just taking that flame and just putting it in one hmm. area. So I'm thinking about heating the whole area, bringing that everything up to temperature all at once so you don't have any cold areas. You can see maybe I'll heat it up a little bit on this side. Then the torch comes over to this side. Um, I was doing the same thing for that. So the heat distribution is is key. And the biggest mistake a lot of beginning solderers make is they don't apply enough heat. Uh, they try to apply the solder when the, the part's not quite up to temperature yet, and they, they bring the, the solder past the flame, and it kind of melts the solder and just kind of clumps up. Mm. And that's usually what you get when you get these solder sculptures. I want that a little bit. Yeah, but they'll learn all about this tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. Eastern, Eastern yes, Pacific. yes, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern time, Eastern. yes. <laughs> Ryan, thank you so much for that awesome demonstration. This has been our Wednesday Wisdom, where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. It is also September, the third week of September. it. And make sure you take the hashtag September and put it in the comments below. Uh, please like this video as well. Share it around with your friends. You'll be entered into the drawing this Friday when we have our good friend Benny Hill uh, to play a live demo of the Wilmington tenor as long as as well as Stan Getz's uh, SBA tenor that we overhauled in the shop. And if you sign up for the course today, uh, you're also going to win the free solder and flux kit uh, for signing up for the course, for Ryan's course that we're going to start uh, tomorrow morning. And next week, speaking of heat, uh, we had a, a viewer ask for a, uh, a little more in-depth video on how to heat up uh, the left hand of a soprano saxophone and use the air torch. So that's going to be what we're going to do next Wednesday for our Wednesday Wisdom. Uh, that's going to do it for now. So until next time, happy September. September.